Parliament might have broken for the winter recess, but Garth Hamilton, Deputy Chair of the Parliament's Economics Committee in the House, isn't letting go of the issues that are making life hard for Australians. Inflation in the cost of living and specifically the cost of housing. I'm pleased to say he joins me now. Garth, thank you so much for your time tonight. There's been lots of speculation recently about who the next governor of the RBA will be. But you've observed that no matter who it is, they're going to face a much harder time because of the proposal to change the remit of the RBA to take into account both questions of inflation and questions of employment. Tell us all why it is you're concerned about that. Well, for a start, Amanda, we've seen how difficult it's been to make decisions as it is. You know, that current I suppose they've only got just inflation and they're still pretty hard. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And this is the hard work of, of Peter Costello to set that 2 to 3% inflation target and keeping it at that is very difficult. Uh, to include, I mean, this is a recommendation from a review from the, into the RBA, to include unemployment, to have equal weighting with that, makes the job almost impossible because, quite frankly, there's no direct link with what the RBA can do and, and directly impacting unemployment the way it can inflation. Uh, so, look, this, this could be a very difficult challenge for whoever comes in. And quite frankly, I, I am a bit sceptical when we have a treasurer who wants to rewrite capitalism of any change <laughs> that comes through. I think it's important we do scrutinise these things. What troubles me about it is that inflation is driven by the decisions of the RBA, but it's also driven by fiscal policy. It's driven by what governments do as well. If you introduce unemployment into that mix as well, arguably there's even more of a fiscal element to the drivers of unemployment. Are we asking the RBA to do a job that is asking them to do more political work in a way that potentially undermines their independence? Now, I think at the heart, this, this is the concern that I have. Uh, you know, we've seen the RBA deputy governor make comments just this week about the, the unemployment ban that they'd like to see us. Uh, get to in time. So do consider this. Mm. Uh, but to give it equal weighting with inflation is, is, you know, just imagine the extremes when, you know, 15% inflation, let's say, and 0% unemployment. Well, you're not going to consider those two things equally. Uh, you're going to have to make some judgment on this. But I think that the sad part is that, you know, monetary policy should be accommodating fiscal policy, mm. should be dominated by it. Yeah. And that independence needs to remain. And by giving equal weighting to this, I think there's a real risk uh, of, of challenging what has been, a, by and large, a very successful uh, position for the RBA. Of course, what the RBA does flows onto the affordability of mortgages, which affects housing. And anyone looking at it can see we've got a housing crisis right now. And whether you're trying to rent, whether you're trying to pay a mortgage, whether you're just trying to get into a property to be a buyer, it's all really hard and supply is at the heart of this problem. Labor have said they'll have a fund. It won't even touch the sides of what is essentially only targeting public housing type problems. The Greens want a rental freeze, which can surely only make things worse. But isn't this a problem that is essentially the product of green-leaning councils? Oh, absolutely. And uh, let's be very clear. The number one issue, I think, facing Australia is getting young Australians into home ownership, you know, keeping that great Australian dream alive. But what we need to prosecute is for people to understand what's caused the supply issues has been green policies um, at that local level restricting supplies. Every time we see increases in red and green tape, every time that NIMBY attitude comes back and pushes back against a new development, mm. that's reducing supply. And we've seen that across the nation. So as much as the issue is one of supply, it's really an issue of bad green policy that is causing it. And the solution is not more bad green policy. <laughs> now, we have to address supply. Neither party, uh, Labor or the Greens, are doing that. They're having this little tiff uh, but really, it's a bit of kabuki theatre at this point. There's a chance here, though, to perhaps for the first time really nail the Greens to uh, nail their colours to the mast about what their policies do in the lives of Australians. And the answer surely isn't more Greens madness. Um, how will the coalition help people to understand, particularly in those teal seats that are a little bit susceptible to um, an environmental issue, that the Greens actually pose a risk to the most important thing they need, and that's a roof over their head. Well, this isn't just an issue for those who are trying to enter the market. You know, think about the bank of mum and dad that's been leaned on so heavily yeah. by people trying to get in. Grandparents looking down and wishing that their grandkids had the same opportunities they did. We need to explain this supply issue, what it's come from. I mean, to be very clear that when 
the Greens raise issues like rent caps. This is not a solution. This is something that will make things much, much worse. Uh, price caps always restrict future supply. So every step the Greens have done has created this problem and now they're trying to make it worse. The best thing we can do uh, in the coalition is have that honest conversation with younger Australians and say, look, we want you to be homeowners, but we have to put in place the right policy settings to achieve that. Well, thank you so much for the work that you're doing to make sure that Australians of all ages both understand what the drivers are for affordable, reasonable housing, um, but also what the risks are to making that something that's achievable for all. Thank you so much, Garth Hamilton. Always a pleasure.